Hello everybody, let's talk about England's first T20 International World Cup game against Scotland. Or the bit that we got of it. Okay, so Barbados was the destination, the venue for... Um, England's first game against Scotland. The Kensington Oval was the venue, to be more precise, and these were your teams. As you can see, Joss Buller putting out a strong and somewhat predictable 11, with Hartley, Duckett, Topley and Curran all missing out. And for Scotland, uh, Richie Berrington put out this 11. Scotland fans, did they surprise you at all? Is there anyone else you would have seen in there or not um, you can see towards the right there the four players that didn't make the first 11 this time around Scotland won the toss and elected to bat Josh Buller said he would have bowled and I believe him um, so we didn't actually manage to get underway on time the game was due to start at half past three UK time the rain came in and the the groundsman needed time to clear up, etc., etc., and the schedule, the start was rescheduled for 4 p.m. UK time. 4 p.m. came and went, and we eventually got on a little bit before half past four. And the reason for the extended delay was that the uh, the the sheets that had been put on to protect the wicket, there must have been a leak or a hole in them somewhere. But an amount of water, amount of concentrated water, got in on on a very small part of the, the pitch and it looked pretty straight and on a length to be honest so um, they were making all efforts to try and dry this one little patch and we eventually got rid of that and we started almost an hour later and I think it's fair to say when we got on the Scotland openers absolutely bossed the power play. Munzee and Jones both got 40 odd each and they took a liking to the England openers with none of the England bowlers really seeming to be in any sort of rhythm. Mark Wood bowled quickly he had a he had the lowest economy rate. He had a, a catch, well taken off a no ball, but ultimately the England bowlers didn't manage to take a wicket. I think Adil Rashid bowled well considering the circumstances. We went off for a further rain delay. Duck with the Lewis method kicked in, and the game was reduced to ten overs. That left three and a bit overs for the Scotland openers to come back out and and have a slog. We'd already used up the vast majority of the pace. Um, so Rashid, poor chap, had to come on bowl. He's both, of, both of his overs, uh, he bowled. Um, what did he bowl? He bowled the 18th and 20th over, and he really bowled to the circumstances. And he and he he went for 26 of two, but he he bowled it wide without bowling without bowling any wides. Um, and he, he used his flight and he used his pace just to to try and bewildered the Scottish batsman but ultimately Scotland ended up on 90 which meant that England needed 109 to win or they would have needed 109 to win if they'd managed to get on for the second innings. The game was called off just a little bit before 8 o'clock uh, UK time and for the minutes leading up to that it was clear that it, they weren't going to get back on the, the clouds just filled with grey clouds and the rain just did not look like stopping it was setting for the day and I think it's probably still raining now. So, of course, England are in Group B. This is what Group B looks like. Now, Australia play tomorrow. Namibia are the only side to get a win after beating Oman with a uh, winning the Super over yesterday, or, or maybe the day before, apologies. Um, David Visa plying his trade with bat and ball, um, smashing, what was it, 21, or him and his partner getting 21 that Super over, and uh, Oman never really had a chance, really. So... Namibia topped the group with two points. I'm going to put Scotland second with their one point just because I thought they were the better team today. So I'm just going to drop England into third. Australia haven't played and Oman have obviously played one and, and lost one. So they're bottom of the group right now. So my question for you, if you want to answer in the comments, did England or, or Scotland surprise you in any way today? And specifically for the England players, would you swap out any of the bowlers ready for Australia on Saturday? In the other results so far in the T20 International World Cup, we've seen the West Indies just about get over the line against Papua New Guinea. 
The opening day game was a banger between the USA and Canada with Jones getting 90 odd not out. Afghanistan absolutely thrashed Uganda by 125 runs. And South Africa ball Sri Lanka out for their lowest ever T20 total of 77 with Andrik Nokia uh, taking four wickets for just seven runs, which brings into question the quality of the New York wicket. It has gained a lot of press over the last day or two and we're going to pay close attention to that as well. Very two-paced, up and down. Um, probably not a wicket that any batsman is going to look forward to playing on, to be honest. Although the opportunity to play cricket in New York in a World Cup is sounds pretty good to me. I'll, I'll take the bouncers, beamers, the ones that jump off a length. <sighs> yeah. And I've just started recording this just as the Netherlands get over the line against Nepal, beating them by six wickets in Dallas, Texas. So there are a few teams that have still to play. Um, Pakistan, India, Ireland, Australia, just to name a few. But let me know, has anybody stood out? Any team or any player or anything about the tournament that's sort of noteworthy for you? Let me know. So not much to talk about today. Match abandoned due to rain between England and Scotland in the first game of the, the T20 World Cup. Um, again, good luck to Ireland tomorrow against India. That's me done for another one. So as usual, stay healthy and I'll see you soon.